Okay, so up next uh, we have Kevin2600 here with uh, Bluetooth at Bytes, and I'll let him do his own intro and stuff. So take it away. Okay. Oops. Still working? Yeah, okay. So, short, short wait? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so thanks for attending my talk. Uh, today I'd like to share with you my experience, experience to reverse engineering one of the uh, Bluetooth lock called DocBong. So just before I actually start this, I'm just curious to ask how many people here are actually using one of the smart lock? Show hands. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So my, my name is Kevin. I come from Vancouver. And I, I am an independent security researcher. I like to play with uh, wireless and, and better systems myself. And you are always welcome to follow me on Twitter. <coughs> Sorry. So here are the things we are going to cover today. So first, I will start with uh, some introduction, um, some fundamental knowledge of the BTLE. Um, and then we, I will move on to the BTLE logs in particular. And then I will go through the methods I have used in during the reverse engineering process. So after this talk, I hope everyone can apply this uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, to other smart locks on, or on similar BTLE devices. So what is, the, uh, what is BTLE anyway? So BTLE stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, those BTLE devices has, has been uh, widely used to get in in a, in a, in a, around the world, and also getting more even more popular. <coughs> um, it, compared to the old days, the uh, Bluetooth Classic, uh, it also operating on 2.4 gigahertz, but the difference is it only has 40 channels. Uh, 30 of them, uh, 30, 37 of them are for data transfer, and there's three channels dedicated to broadcasting the BTL device existence. So um, you're also using frequency hopping and <coughs> some common technique. Mm, okay. so, uh, so in Bluetooth low energy, it has a thing called GAT. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so in Bluetooth low energy, it has a thing called GAT, G-A-G-T. Is essentially is a profile to define how two Bluetooth devices to communicate in each other. And it contains several services. And each service has a group of things called characteristics. Uh, we are able to read and write and notify to those characteristics. And also each characteristic has a unique thing called UUID associated with them. And those UUID are used to define what the functionality of this particular characteristic takes half. <laughs> okay. um, so in Bluetooth Low Energy, it has also implemented some uh, security. So basically, it actually relies on AES CCM for the session encryptions. Um, also, uh, but there's uh, one thing very common that uh, some, uh, a lot of Bluetooth de uh, PTLE devices are rely on uh, level one in in a spec, uh, basically, which which that means there's no authentication or uh, encryption in this particular level, <coughs> and also since a lot of BTLE or uh, devices they don't have uh, capability to enter in the pin code, so there's uh, they they were using uh, when, when you want to pairing with, with your mobile phone to the those devices, you will need they, they simply using the math uh, technique called just works. Basically, just uh, six digit number zeros. <laughs> so that way, you don't need to bother to enter any pin code. And this, by design, uh, I think is uh, vulnerable. So anyone can connect into your BTL devices. <laughs> so um, before we, we actually start to uh, hacking or reverse engineer some of the BTL devices, we need to have some uh, equipment ready. So in general, the we, we can use simply just using our mobile phones, uh, like like with the BTLE uh, enabled. Uh, we can just already interactive with those BTLE devices, and 
also we can simply buy uh, very cheap US, uh, USB uh, BTLE dongles. <coughs> Uh, also, if we want, if we want uh, to have more capability, we can buy a thing called uh, uh, Ubuntu, and I will mention more on this particular device later on. Also, if we, uh, I also recommend people to get in a device called UD100. Um, the beauty of this thing is it has uh, uh, external connectors. So you can connect into the, your uh, Yagi or uh, antennas so you can see it much further away. <laughs> so, um, so once we have the hardware sorted out, we also can, we can simply use a uh, mobile phone app to communicate with those devices. So I would highly recommend to using an application called Light Blue. It's very easy and simple to use. But again, there's plenty of the application like this uh, in, a, in, in a Google Player Store, so you can always just download where, pick whatever one you, you like. And if we want to go deeper, uh, we can uh, using free open source uh, software, like seems like a, a get to, it's a command line interface. So we're using get to, we can, uh, can see, uh, we, ca we, we get a more, uh, deeper back, uh, knowledge of, uh, regarding your, your target. <laughs> so once we have uh, software and hardware uh, sorted out, and the next reasonable move will be to see how many, what kind of uh, BTL devices are actually out there, right? So for me, uh, I just go wherever, wh wherever I go, I start to scanning to see if anything there interesting. So, for example, the, fir <laughs> the first picture on the right, I, I scan in in the, in the airport to see because the, since there's the most uh, popular pe people, a lot of people there, and also I do the old uh, old school way to dr walk driving around to residential area to see if there's any interesting. And also, if you like, uh, I also like to just scan in <laughs> in the B side, right? Why not, right? <laughs> okay, so. Uh <coughs> Uh, w when we want to do some uh, this kind of site survey, uh, I highly recommend to using software called uh, Blue Hydra. The Blue Hydra is the Kismet-like uh, uh, software, uh, but it's dedicated to Bluetooth device hunting. Um, so again, I, as I mentioned, I like to use this device called uh, UD100. So I build uh, just use a Yagi antenna attached to it and then connecting the UD100 to the Raspberry Pi. And in this way, <laughs> We can, um, it's very portable and I can see much further away. So here, I wonder if you can clearly see it. Um, but here, here are some of the results I, I found. What, now, interestingly, uh, I found a lot of the Bluetooth BTL devices are actually from Apple's. <coughs> so maybe I can't create some kind of conclusion that Apple users don't really care ab about their privacy. <laughs> right? Okay, so um, right, I think this one. I, I yeah, I, I I do this one. I captured from uh, in the airport. So as you can see, a lot of I, uh, device uh, smartphones, uh, <coughs> also uh, Blackberries. Now, to see the uh, the very the last one called the Pay Range, I wonder if anyone recognizes what that device is. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so actually, we, ha we have one out just in the lobby. So I was interested in, so you see, the things like this, uh, like, like, uh, like IoT, like everything is supposed to be uh, uh, connected. So w which means you open more, like a, a another entry point. So if you want to say, so if we want to uh, pen, <coughs> pen testing the, the payment systems, now we have more ways remotely. And also, this one, I, uh, I just using Yak antenna point to the highway, right? So I see more interesting devices. So if you, so, so, so pay attention to the uh, uh, OBD2. So if anyone here into uh, car hacking, then you will definitely know what that is. Now, in, in, in old days, <coughs> when you want to do, uh, you connecting your OBD, you need a wired. But since it has uh, uh, go uh, wireless now, we can actually, if we find a vulnerability in, in, in this particular device, then we probably can remote, actually remote to control your car. 
right? <laughs> and again, uh, a lot of people uh, using hands-free devices, wearable headsets uh, in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a highway, right? So, <coughs> okay, so Bluetooth lock. Now, during the year, research, researchers have managed to find many vulnerabilities on so-called smart locks. So I recommend uh, people who are interested to check in this this uh, examples out, right? So, but what kind of uh, vulnerability that we can find in Bluetooth lock? <coughs> now, this one, I, I just do a quick uh, 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 on online search, and I found this particular uh, device very interesting. E, you see, if you, <laughs> you probably cannot see it clearly, but it actually says the, ma the master code, the Bluetooth lock unlocks with a permanent master code, <laughs> right? So this is the features, right? It, it actually advertises as the features, good, right? So what else we can find? <laughs> and this are uh, list, uh, some of the list uh, uh, of the uh, research has found, the vulnerability they, they have found. So as you can see, e like the first one, it uh, is vulnerable to plain text attack, and the second one, it is vulnerable to replay. So this, those are the uh, vulnerabilities that are very common in the in the networking side, in the computing side, right? But it also same apply to the IoT. And also uh, this one, uh, the other one is called Okie Doki. I found this one is very interesting. That basically we can do a, a fuzzing attack. Now we we sending a mail phone uh, data <laughs> to it. Now Okie Doki cannot recognize it. Uh, then we respond as unlock it, right? So, and there's many more that want to be like this you can find. <coughs> so, so he here comes our main target today, the dog bone smart lock. That, uh, I, uh, I actually found this uh, in Best Buy. I don't know, I, I'm not sure if they still have it. But anyway, uh, dog bone lock is made by a UK-based company. They mainly uh, making accessories for the mobile phones so all of a sudden, they want to make a smart locks. Cool. So <coughs> uh, just like uh, every other smart lock companies, they will like to uh, advertising their products are the most secure one in the market. Right? Cool. Um, but sometimes that goes too far away. So basically, I found this statement <laughs> on their, their, their website. They basically, say, don't worry about hacking, right? The padlock enjoys a security that's compatible to a bank. And what's that mean? what does that mean, right? So that means you need a skill set like a Steven, uh, Steve Wodinak uh, to try to break things like this. Fine. That challenge accepted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. So <laughs> right. the first stage we do run recon. So the, during the recon stage, the most important thing is try to get as many uh, uh, details as possible for our target. So the first things we can use in like the tool like Edge. Uh, uh, like mobile phone, like, like I just mentioned, the light blue or some other tools <coughs> to get some basic information, like uh, the MAC address, uh, also like what kind of servers that's uh, already exposed to us. Okay. Um, also, when you can also always to do some Google search first. So maybe some some people, uh, some, some some other people already do some research for you. So uh, so um, I'm w I was lucky that I found the <coughs> uh, list. Uh, Dark bone lock has already been taken apart by a researcher called Ray, and he presented in CCC, uh, uh, I think so maybe two years ago. Um, and so basically, uh, here's an internal photo of the dark bone lock. Now, it turns out the most important thing is the dark bone lock using the Nautic NRF51822 chipset, and this is a very common, uh, one of the common uh, chipset that using for in in the, in the field that for Bluetooth devices. <coughs> Okay, so here's a, a smart lock architecture. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, you have, uh, basically you have uh, your mobile phone in the middle. <laughs> and in uh, one side, uh, using Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth or maybe our Wi-Fi, whatever technology, they, uh, wireless technology, they can, uh, uh, <coughs> talk to your lock. And then on the other side, they maybe using HTTP or HTTPS to connect into your cloud. And then they just do some kind of man in the middle thing stuff, right? <coughs> So now, in, in, in order to understand deeper how dark bound locks works, so the first thing we can do is to check out uh, what kind of functionality that it actually has provided. 
So we so I install a <laughs> Duckbound mo mobile app. Now Duckbound mobile app comes with the iOS and the Android versions. Now <coughs> by so I just try to e try to explore, go crazy to try to add all the functionalities that uh, it, it has already provided. Um, so basically, we can some basic functions like we can always check the battery level or other current status of the lock. <laughs> and if we want to open this lock, there, there's a couple uh, different ways. So first, we can try to simply tap to unlock or configure a passcode to unlock it. <laughs> now, also. One, one of the beauty of, of the uh, uh, smart locks is that we can able to share the lock with different users. So basically, if you are um, currently uh, in another uh, side of the world, then all of a sudden your friend wants to visit your house, you can always share the, uh, the account to, to your friend, and then they can ac access it. So cool. Now, <coughs> um, now but sometimes they just, they this kind of uh, interesting uh, smart function go too far, I think, uh, because for this particular lock, they also have a function that uh, you can check how many uh, current, how many uh, uh, dog-bound locks are currently near, me, uh, near you with a, a Google map. So now we got a, what we got is a, a social network of our locks, right? Now, but <laughs> think about this way. Uh, wh what happens if you, uh, uh, the cloud server has been compromised, right? So maybe the attacker not only know your secret, the, the key, they also, where <laughs> they also know where the locker is. So, <coughs> right, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so uh, I think the most common when 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 the first stage when you want to attack in, uh, to try to pen testing some some other devices that <laughs> I uh, I always go to the easy target like uh, I I pick the Android app first because they are easy to de to to uh, decompile so I can use an uh, application like a JD GUI. <laughs> um, now uh, the most uh, I think one of the most uh, common mistakes the, the for those IoT developers they, they don't bother to use any sort of code hardening or, or no obfuscation at all. <laughs> so basically, we just almost like just reading the source code once we decompile it, right? <coughs> so so just by reading through the Java bytecode, uh, we can learn a lot about uh, internal uh, how a mechanism of these dog bound locks works by by don't even we, we, we not, so remember we, we, at this stage we haven't even touched the uh, physical touch the lock yet, so now we so for example we can get a list of the <laughs> uh, UUID that uh, these locks are currently using, so um, yeah probably you cannot see it but uh, uh, one of these uh, UUID called, uh, is, is la labeled as a lock password, so basically w w so I already know this particular UUID is for it must have something to do with the, your password. Right. <laughs> also, sometimes you may think you are also so lucky, right? W w when you see the hard code default password appeared in your code, ooh, right? So and apparently this uh, developer, whoever that is, he lost a, uh, he 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 definitely like uh, f word a lot, right? <coughs> uh, but uh, it's not case this time. It's the he actually said it's the default password, but turns out. When the first time user connecting to the Dogbound server with their mobile app, the server will generate a random 40-byte password and send back to the app to replace those default passwords. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, however, uh, those uh, I, I, during the research I found this password only update again when we remove the association between our account and the lock. So basically, if you don't remove it, the, 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 default, the password will never change. Now, think about this. H how many people actually will just, uh, every time you unlock it, your, your lock, and then you remove account, and then join back again, to just in order to update the password? Right. Also, in the menu, they never mention that, this mechanism. So general public user, they will not, never know. <coughs> um, So, yeah, so that basically this is what happens. <laughs> now, if you haven't, uh, if you never do, uh, 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 
uh, IoT pen testing before, you may wonder how do I find out this uh, find out this details out. <laughs> uh, it's because even dogbound application actually encrypt with the, the traffic with the SSL, but it does not use in third penny, right? So we can still able to sniff in the traffic between the app and the server with the software like a, a Bird Pro or Man in the Middle Proxy. So, <laughs> and those other requests and response from the server are now actually under our control. <laughs> and this uh, is a very handy for analyzing different behavior of the uh, uh, document log, uh, which I will uh, show you later on. <laughs> okay, so for, for example, as I mentioned, uh, we can configure a passcode to unlock the lock. <laughs> now, if we would do that, the server <coughs> will obfuscate the actual passcode with a cell 256 and send back to us as a, a current lock status. Now, however, since those passcodes are only used, are only limited to four-digit numbers, so um, <coughs> it, it is very easy <laughs> to crack it, those hash, and find the real password. Right. So now, if someone doing the main the middle attack, now our passcode is so that's just simply gives it away. <coughs> now, <coughs> since the dogbound lock also using Bluetooth communication, to, um, we need to wait to 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 capture those BTL traffics. Now we have a couple options. So first, <coughs> easy one maybe we just sniffing through the air, which I'm gonna mention uh, how to do that later, and now. But the other option is, um, is, I think, is the most convenient way is to in, in all Android 4.4 or higher version, it actually already comes with a nice feature to capture all the proof to traffic for us. <laughs> we can simply just <coughs> enable it, and those uh, traffic will save to uh, a log file called BT Snoop, <coughs> and we can open it with Wireshark and to start to analyzing. <coughs> so. Once we get uh, BTLE to uh, uh, HC, the log files, we we can start to actually step by step to analyzing each uh, stage of the log. Um, so, <coughs> for at this stage, we are going to have much better idea how those uh, dark bound log uh, uh, application work with through through the Bluetooth. So. And most importantly, we are able to confirm that the that, uh, UUID we found earlier, it, it is con associated with the current, uh, uh, it, is, it is the function that uh, to unlocking the password. Uh, also, we, we also can see the what what's the current uh, unlocking password is, that which is uh, this screenshot here. <coughs> so, so here I would like to play, play the first uh, demo. Uh, which just uh, show you that to 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 confirm that uh, the lock password we get it, it is working. <coughs> we simply we simply replay that uh, password code, right? Yeah, we apply the same technique to the other different locks just to make sure that it is working. Okay, opened, right? Now, however, however, for now, we are only get this passcode are only for, from our own mobile phones, right? So it's already in the traffic, uh, the, the, the lock files. So now we come to the stage, we need to find a way to sniff in the unlock pass from here. So basically somebody else's lock. <coughs> so <coughs> how do we do a lot? Attacking the RF. Oops. So <coughs> there are two. Uh, there are actually two different ways we can sniff in the unlocking password. So bas passively or actively. So let's let's take a look how do we do that both. So first, <coughs> I like to do a pa passive attack. <coughs> now, when we want to do a Bluetooth security research, the that, as mentioned earlier, uh, the the Bluetooth is most likely the the device you first you're gonna hear. Uh, <laughs> it's designed by a guy called Michael Osman, and it support it support uh, both Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Low Energy, <coughs> right? <coughs> it's open sourced, and uh, also <coughs> we can 
simply, uh, well, I, I will suggest we get three boop to dangles. The reason why is that is because, as I mentioned, the, <coughs> the BTL is broadcasting three fixed channels, uh, uh, three seven, three eight, uh, thirty nine. So basically, we can uh, using three uh, using three uh, up to dangles to to make sure we can capture those traffics. <coughs> also, uh, but but up to uh, the price a little bit high. So if we 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 uh, <coughs> we short our uh, budget, we can also try to list a little uh, device here called uh, <coughs> uh, uh, TI. Uh, it's a uh, TI Smart RF. Uh, it is basically uh, CC two five a uh, two five four four zero chipset from Tax Instrument, and it's also can, we can also use it to sniffing packet between our mobile app and lock, right? <laughs> and the nice thing about this particular device is it comes with a, a very nice and simple to use Windows GUIs, <laughs> right? So if any any Windows user here. Uh, um, you can simply just use this one. <coughs> Again, I was just using three of them to make sure we can capture the unlocking password. And here's the picture that I, I <coughs> using the uh, TI Smart RF to capture uh, unlocking password. Right. So here I would like to play another <coughs> uh, demo that once we capture uh, those unlocking password, we can use in the, the up mobile application called LightBlue so to unlock it. <coughs> now, uh, you can see um, currently there's a couple uh, uh, lock, lock locks to to let you know how many user uh, how many times this lock has already been open. However, if we're using if we directly uh, talk to the uh, your Bluetooth lock. <coughs> you will see what happens uh, after. So here, I just simply copy those uh, password to the <coughs> to to light blue and to the password UUID. <coughs> yeah, it pop open. Yeah, that works. Now, let's go back to the lock file. See, it, it never increased. So basically, nobody gonna know that lock, your lock is already opened, right? So because the reason is because we're actually directly connecting to, to the, to the B, uh, Bluetooth chipset. It will never go through the applications level. So there's no, no lock file. <coughs> okay, so uh, there's other, uh, other way we can do that. Um, <coughs> in Black Hat 2016, a researcher uh, has a release uh, a tool called GetHacker. That to uh, this GetHacker is dedicated to do BTR in man in the middle attack. <coughs> this tool is suitable for do some uh, denial service attack or spoofing and data inception. For our case, I'm most interested in data inceptions. So, in order to for for uh, make this man in the middle attack works, we need to two BTR dangles. <coughs> so. So for our case, one dangle will acting as a mobile application, and another one is acting as a lock. <coughs> so first, we uh, before we, we jump to the main number of the attack, we can uh, we need to understand a little bit uh, about how BTR application actually works ori originally. So first, mobile application will scanning. <coughs> the first thing you turn on a uh, uh, Bluetooth to uh, feature you're gonna. Uh, using mobile application to scanning for the uh, BTL devices. Um, now, once <laughs> we're actually re receiving some advertisements uh, from that we, we are looking for, it will actually stop scanning any anymore, and it will just connect into this particular device and start to communications, right? <laughs> so, this is how how our uh, BTL many email works on them. So, also I mentioned that we we have two uh, dangles here. <laughs> the first. In one hand, the get hacker will advertising more frequently than the original devices. So it's likely our mobile app will see our device first, and it will just connect into us instead. And on the other hand, another <coughs> get hacker will keep connecting associated with the original device, which is the lock here. Um, it will never so 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 it won't it will not release it. So um, 
the, the actual log will never see actual C. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Okay. So here, here's the video demo that we can. Uh, I would like to show you how do we uh, we using this uh, uh, get attacker to cap capture our unlocking command that we want. Okay. So first you can see. <coughs> So f one computer is also like a sim simulating a lock, and a lot of it is is a uh, application. Right. So, <coughs> so as as soon as we we, we press unlocking, we, we can see that in the very uh, in the dark button, we are already captured the unlocking password. Right. This is how uh, the main metal attack looks like. So <laughs> um, now, so since we can already, we, 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 we learn not uh, how do we able to do uh, RF level. Now let's go back to the application layer. Um, as I mentioned, the, this uh, lock has a very nice feature that I've called a share function, right? <laughs> so basically, we can share the lock with the different users, and we are able to allow certain users to open the lock. Um, this is a actually a very convenient design, I think. But how, how does uh, uh, actually works, and what kind of information has been shared to the different users? Um, <coughs> here, I use in a, a software called Burp to just uh, to do many things again to to see the traffic. To just I don't I won't do anything else. I just pass it to see to see, uh, sniffing it to see how uh, the, the, the sharing function works. So. <coughs> Turns out, actually, share procedure is quite simple. <coughs> when when owner decide to share a lock to one particular user, server will send a sharing invitation token to this particular user, and once this user has accepted this share invitation, uh, the server will and then will reply with lock ID and access type to this account. So, uh, the, those access ty types is, uh, they has three. Uh, they, they, they are a couple of them. So. One is called unlimited, <coughs> so basically you, 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 there's no restriction at all, and then there's limited, so basically you can uh, set like uh, in particular time or how many ta uh, how many days that you can open it, or maybe uh, you can just open it one once and then it will never open again. <coughs> uh, so sounds secure enough, right? Now I wonder if we can actually bypass these uh, limitations. So, uh, <coughs> again, before we to uh, actually able to bypass this limitation, we need to know a bit more. Like basically, how lo, uh, how he, so here the uh, procedure we want uh, when we want to open the the lock shared that which is shared to us, <coughs> sir. So first we will uh, send a request to the server regarding the account status. Then the server will reply us to the current status. Like for example, we can see uh, this particular lock has shared to us. Um, and the uh, access type is always, meaning that we can always open the lock, right? <coughs> now, after we open the lock, uh, we, we, when we send, try to open the lock, our account will send another request to the server to asking for unlocking password. Now, if everything is okay, the server will reply us with current unlock password. And then the lock will simply open for us, right? <coughs> now, as I mentioned, the lock can also configure to open by a number of times. Um, once, now, once all those numbers are used up, we cannot access the lock anymore. And as you can see the example, that access type will become unavailable. <coughs> now, if we still try to unlock it, we send a such a request, we will get an uh, error message reply that says we don't have any unlock remaining. But here's the catch. Since all these requests and response is under our control, so we can replace those re uh, response to some wherever that we want, right? <coughs> so here's the video demo. Uh, I'd like to show you, show you how can we bypass such limitations. <coughs> So f as you can see now, we don't have any unlocking remaining. <coughs> right, it, it says unavailable. <coughs> so, 
So now we use using burp to see the, we, we can simply change the uh, unremaining numbers to from uh, zero to one and then send the risk such a forged response back to the applications. And you see, now we have one unlocked remain now. Okay? Now, now we try to uh, tap it to actually unlock. <coughs> we, will see, we, we will see the response from the server that says we don't have any, uh, uh, it's not no, no remaining anyway. But we can uh, modify this response again with uh, the password that we, we already get early on lock will open, right? So turns out the, limit, uh, the limitation can be easily bypassed by just simply re re replace the response wherever we want. So uh, the response, like uh, for example, like access type, like always, and uh, how many uh, uh, times that left, that kind of thing. So do go crazy, do whatever you want, you can, you can. <coughs> So, and also there's something interesting during the research. I found, um, <coughs> there's a, a, a when, the, when the lock there comes with another feature that you can upgrade in the firmware of the lock through, through OTA. So, <coughs> um, now however, when, when, so every, again, when, I, when we're using a main in the middle proxy, we can see the traffic. Um, Every time that uh, the, the, the lock boot uh, turns on, it will send a request to the server asking for the current, the latest firmware version and the uh, other, uh, so, um, so again, those responses are under our control. So we can ingest some uh, interesting data to see if it will make any difference to this uh, dark bound applications. So, so here we're going to try to ingest some uh, <coughs> some stuff to this public notes. <coughs> um, so as you can see, we can in successfully inject in the different strings to the pub public notes. Now, just try to do all crazy things here, right? Um, now, what I found is, if we actually insert percentage P, and the duck bomb iOS app will crash. Now, <coughs> uh, uh, the reason I wanted to, to mention this, um, is like we don't. Uh, as I mentioned, I usually go when we pen testing those uh, IoT devices. I usually go to Android application first. But but don't forget about iOS. That you may find something interesting there because this uh, crash function we, we will never work on Android version, but only limited to I iOS. Right. <coughs> so here is the demo to show that we when we <coughs> injecting those uh, format strings. Um, iOS version acquisition we just simply crashed. Okay. <coughs> Sorry for um, making <laughs> but waiting video demo with one hand is <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Yeah, but they say it's, it's, it's crushed, right? So now, what else we can do? <coughs> um, now, uh, so so far we have went through all the different uh, uh, po diff complicated process, like tr tr by reverse engineering applications, by sniffing the Bluetooth traffic. Now, it turns out there's a very simple way to bypass this lock as well. So basically, we can simply <laughs> using a technique called a shun, right? So now remember, this is a $100 lock. Now once we simply you insert this shun to pop open, <laughs> right? $100 lock. So turns out we don't need to bother to use in reverse engineer at all. <laughs> so the oldest trick from the book always works the best, okay? Now, here's some summaries. Never trust, completely trust the user input. Uh, once, uh, <coughs> uh, so also, when develop, if you are try to de developing a mobile application, do consider to secure, to secure your applications, like enable uh, like third panning 
using hard, other uh, whatever the hard hardening technique that you can find, and never complete trust the users, right? Any input controlled by users are potentially can be manipulated, right? And also, most importantly, think like an attacker, or just or simply just hire hackers or lock pickers to, to fully test the, your product before they actually go to market, right? And I think there, there, oh, there are going to be even more IoT uh, devices coming out. So let's ha hack in and have fun. Right, so, okay, uh, well, I'd like to say it's a big thanks for, for uh, uh, Beyond Security for, for help during the research, uh, helping from during the research, and they, they do uh, some zero day research. So if you guys do not, uh, check it out. Okay, I have a question. Thank you. <laughs>